Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Exponential Functions. Question number four, exponential decay, half-life. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. What we're doing here is effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a brand new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2, and if I could stick every single math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order and purchase the complete cram session so that you can get your healthy dose of Algebra 2. You have lots of friends, colleagues, classmates, and or pairs who are taking Algebra 2 with you as well. Tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can purchase the complete Algebra 2 cram session. Let's delve into the concept. Question 4. Exponential decay half-life. The amount A in milligrams of a 10 milligram dose of a drug remaining in the body after T hours is given by the formula A is equivalent to 10 times 0 0.8 raised to the T. How long does it take for one half of the drug dose to leave? Leave the body, that is. And what is the hourly percent decrease for the drug? So these are two completely different questions. Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to come up with an answer, or two answers, rather. All righty then, hopefully by now you are able to press pause and arrive at an answer, and if you didn't, well, two answers, if you didn't, that's completely fine. Okay, so it's definitely time to put on our thinking hats. Half of 10 milligrams, the initial value of the drug, as we're told in the question stem, is going to be five milligrams. So what we're going to do is substitute five, um, for A, okay, because if half of the drug dose leaves, then um, this means that half of the drug dose is left, okay? Yeah, so that's just common sense. This is the part of algebra that's not just simply one plus one. You have to actually think outside the box in a logical fashion, okay? So we have our starting equation. We're substituting five for the remaining amount because we're interested in how long it takes half to leave. So this means that half will remain at the half leaving point. It's like the same point. And now what we're going to do is divide both sides by 10, the 10 representing the initial starting 10 milligrams, okay? And just note, this is a decay equation. So after dividing um, both sides by 10, we're left with 0 0.5 is equivalent to 0 0.8 um, t, raised to the t, rather. And to get the t down from the exponent, what we're going to do is take the logarithm of both sides, the uh, left-hand side and the right-hand side, because we know that the logarithm function is the inverse of the exponential function, so it just basically undoes um, an exponent, okay? But that's not exactly what's going to happen here. You're going to see why in a moment. So the log of 0 0.5 is equivalent to the log of 0 0.8t. Here we just extend the parentheses outside the exponent because we're taking the log of this entire exponential term, okay? Now we're going to use the power law uh, or power property of logarithms to simplify the right-hand side of the equation. And we know that the logarithm of a power a power being the overall result of an exponential equation, which is always what's expressed along um, within the parentheses of the log being taken, is going to equal the exponent times the logarithm of the base. So let's re-express this as such. So the log of 0 0.5 is equivalent to the exponent of our starting um, expression times the logarithm of the base, okay? 
So this is a display of the power property or power law of logarithms. And now basically what we can do is um, solve for t, or the time for one half of the drug to remain and one half of the drug to leave. Okay, so um, basically what we have to do is uh, divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.8, the log of base 0 0.8. And we get that t equals the log of 0 0.5. And whenever the, I, I said the log of base 0 0.8, well, the logarithm of 0 0.8, rather. Whenever the base isn't written as a subscript after log, this means that we're using the common logarithm, or base 10, but it actually doesn't matter, yeah, for our purposes, as long as we're using the log of this, with a log that has the same base. I think I just confused you if I did just scratch what I said. So t is obviously going to be equivalent to the log of 0 0.5 divided by the log of 0 0.8 that we previously divided both sides by and brought it over to the um, left hand side, but then we flipped because visually this is more organized to in mathematics than in the United States. And now all you have to do is punch this into your calculator. And when you do so, you get 3.11. So half of the drug leaves the body after 3.11 hours. Okay, so that answers the first question. Now to find the hourly percent decrease for the drug, what we're first going to have to do is look at the base for the original exponential function. And, um, if you purchase some of my other cram sessions and you study decimal and percent conversion, you would know that 0 0.8 is another way of representing 80%. Okay? So this is definitely where you have to think outside the box because this um, isn't so apparent if you haven't done a problem like this before, okay? But if the base B, I'm calling the base B, here were 1, that would represent, or 1.0 rather, that would be 100%. There would be no change because we know that the base 1 raised to any power is just going to be 1, 1 over and over and again, okay? So 1 is going to be our baseline comparison. And in the given equation, b equals 0 0.8, which is 0 0.2 or 20% less than 1, or 1 1.0 or the point of no change. So the hourly um, percent decrease of the drug is basically going to be 20% because 0 0.8 is left over. And you'll get to understand with the k functions, the base represents what's left over after the time change, okay? So our hourly decrease is 20%. If this was 0 0.7, the hourly decrease would be 30%. If it was 0 0.5, the hourly decrease would be 50%, okay? All right, so yeah, these are our two answers. We have 3.11 for the amount of hours. It takes for half the drug to leak and the 20% um, hourly decrease of the drug, okay? Which kind of makes sense, I think. <laughs> yeah, this adds up about right. All right, so thanks for tuning in and good luck studying.